show you really big Yeah, it's far out and technical and stuff Awesome, yeah Come on, come on and turn it on Tune in to the Tech Shop Come on, come on and turn it on Tune in to the Tech Shop Come on, come on and turn it on Tune in to the Tech Shop Come on, come on and turn it on Tune in to the Tech Shop Cool. We're live in three, two, one. <laughs> Wait, we're already live. <laughs> no! Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tech Shamans. Uh, we've been a uh, happy new year, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, whatever, Kwanzaa, whatever it is you happy, celebrate. Happy good end you. of weekend. Yes. Yay. Oh, wait. No, that's an oxymoron. Never yeah, mind. Exactly. So it's Monday morning, and we are here with your tech news today, and we actually have a lot. Um, I'm going to start off with saying that we're going to touch on some of the CES stuff, even though that we were not there. We're just going to read some of the articles, and then we'll give our take on them. Because, uh, again, if we're not there, we can't really give you what what we think because we weren't there. Yeah, we can only give you what we think about what other people think. That's right, exactly. We'll talk about what other people talk about and think whether right. or not they think they know what they're talking about. Which so. is why hearsay evidence is not admissible it, in court. Exactly, Bam! exactly. Here's so, <clears throat> let's just jump right in here real quick. Um, the top eight takeaways from CES. Now, <clears throat> this is coming from our favorite place, The Verge. You know, so uh, it's... It's, uh, they got some interesting stuff, and believe it or not, we're going to get a little sexy today. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Sex. Dash okay. Why? Yeah. So I guess one of the biggest things that um, coming from CES is all the TV manufacturers are trying to look a way to stick it to us. <laughs> I read the article. That's kind of what I got out of it. Yeah. Because everything is bezel-less or ultra-thrin or curved or this or that or it's 8K, it's 16K, it's 25K. You all know how I feel about the K. Past 2.4K doesn't really matter anymore. You can't Every, see it. Everything you see on a 4K television or an 8K TV has been enhanced and over-rest. That's it. Sorry. Just, so... What Don't does waste it mean? Your money. What does it mean to be enhanced and overrest? Right here, I'm enhanced <laughs> and overrest. Obviously, nobody wants to look at that too long. There you go. There you have it. Well, actually, but because what'll happen is everything starts looking fake, and you can see yeah. you can see the oversaturation going on, and it's just it's ridiculous. So, yeah. the reason that have people have 8K now is so they can say, "I have an 8K TV." Perfect. Well, in 10 years, everything will be an 8K TV. So you can say, I had the first 8K TV, but then you're now showing how old you are. So <laughs> never mind. Yeah. There's no headroom on that shot. I don't like that shot. Anyway, so yeah, so I guess right now, you know, I mean, how much more can you do to a TV? Yeah. Oh, well, I you can make it foldable. <laughs> you can make it uh, well, okay. rollable so it pulls Fo down from the ceiling. Foldable's coming next. We're going to talk about how it's not ready. But yeah. the bottom line is, there's, I mean, TV is a TV is a TV. I mean, granted, the, the, some colors are great and you're beautiful and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and all. It's yeah. actually about how it's been shot, too. Yeah. If it was shot and produced for having it to go to 4K, then I mean, it's one thing. Honestly, this is as big or bigger than TV screens used to be when they first went into homes. Yeah. Yeah, actually, okay. you're right. That is, that is how big a TV screen used to be. And guess what? And Everybody... A Every, yeah, in, in a box the size of a refrigerator. Right. But, um, but everybody was, oh, my God, look what we have. Right. And so you could watch a whole program, albeit in black and white, um, on still that got screen. to watch it, though. And guess what? Many of us still watch all of our programs on screens this big. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we do. So, and, or this big. Let's yeah, that's really typically where we're Yeah, this is, this is where we're getting, you know, a lot of our consumption these days. So this idea... I, God, I walked into somebody's office yesterday, and she literally had a, you, you know, you walk in the doors at the end of the room, and then running down this whole wall, she had an 85-inch television that was just picking up from her monitor. So it was, it was her monitor, and she was sitting four feet from it. Oh, does she wear glasses? <laughs> what are you doing? Does she wear glasses? No, but... She will. Yeah, in about, you know, a week and a half, but it's like... It, Burn her who, out. Okay, I can see for watching movies at home to replace the theater experience. 
and maybe for watching sports. But at no point does the quality come into play that you need an 8K in order to watch a football game. Well, here's the thing, though. If you're sitting, if you have an 85 inch and you're only sitting three to four feet away, you can't get the full experience of that television. No, it's like IMAX from the front row. Right. Which yeah, actually right. could give you whiplash and make you Which sick Which is at the actually same time. the worst thing you can ever have. I yes, mean, yes, an, an, 80, an, 80, an 80 inch TV, your depth on that should be 12 feet yeah. more. Yeah. She was maybe like, like her, her desk was three feet from it, so she was yeah. on the other side of the desk, maybe five feet. No, the that's, TV okay. manufacturers know crazy. people don't. <clears throat> yeah. The but, typical living room is not, you know, <laughs> 12 feet deep. <laughs> yeah. So Unless it's a shotgun yeah. and you're, you're over your mantle of your fireplace or something right, like something that. Right, something like that, yeah. Uh, but, but anyway, really so I guess, I guess that's the big thing now is they're, yeah. trying, they're trying to figure out how to make it, the TV better. I, I, here's what I want. Make a TV that actually works like it's supposed to work. Hey. If you do that, then I'm good. Yeah. I'm more happy about that. How about endless updates to the apps that are in it? Well, so that way you don't have to throw the TV away when yeah, that's, or get an external device to... Yeah. You know, a smart, just because you get the TV becomes preloaded with six or seven apps that can't be updated, nor can you add more, that's not a smart TV, by the way. Yeah. That is a dumb TV. No, that... that that is, that is uh, engineered obsolescence. obsolescence. That's exactly, TV. and yeah. that's yes. and by the day it rolls that, off the assembly line, assembly line, it's obsolete. It's already outdated. Yep. Yeah, because but Moore's anyway. law. So, and then the second thing that they talked about at CD is foldables aren't ready yet, but flexible screens are coming. What's the difference? Well, if, um, if, if you one put you can a roll, pin, one you can fold. Yeah, if you if crease you, it, if you crease it, you crease it. I don't yeah, care if you dead. do a ninety degree or if you just put a gentle little roll in there. It's yeah. No. Well, no. If, if you crease it, that's the difference, okay? You can roll screens. I mean, who was it? LG? LG, yeah. Just came out with that new monster rollable <coughs> that you can pull down from the ceiling. Right. Okay? I think that's a phenomenal idea. It's basically a projector screen without a projector. Right. And I love that idea. I would do that. Uh, we do not actually have a television in our house. Uh, we run everything off either a small screen Anthony's or... Anthony's <laughs> <laughs> are you Amish? Are you? <coughs> no, uh, we. I don't know. That cut, man. That's, yeah. that's, that's a little bit of an Amish cut going on here. I think he, I think he's not telling us. Hey, something. look, I'm wearing black. I'm wearing black all the time. You know, so I'm always in here in black. Yeah, yep. You are. Yep. yep. Um, I've been living yeah, in the Amish I mean, paradise. <coughs> a lot that's of people. Actually, one of my favorite songs. A lot of people. Oh my gosh. A lot Weird of people out. have gotten away from having a TV in their house. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, we cut the, the cable the back in 2004. And so we've been just internet driven since then. So we're, we're on 16 years now. Without, I hear phones ringing. Cable. Somebody needs to answer that damn thing. I know. If only oh your God. imaginary friend Rob would pick it up. I know. How about that? Um, I can't believe our door's still <laughs> open to the production facility either, too. That's kind of funny, too. Josh forgot that. That's Unbelievable. We're going to throw him under the bus or in yep. front of it at least. Wait, let's back up. Wait, let's back up. Back up. Do, 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 do. No, back up the back truck. The <laughs> back up the bus. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I could have told you, I could have said this a long time. I could have saved them that whole, writing that whole article to tell you that the, um, that the uh, phones aren't ready to be folded in half. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, look how easy it is to break stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've I dealt mean, with those. And, I've, and I've seen this. those rollable. Yeah. Yeah, they're not all, they're, the minute, what the problem is, is the minute they start laying on top of each other, yeah. start scratching it. Yeah, not not for nothing though. But even Apple used the, the rolling up, not of the screen itself, but of like the electronics uh, for the screen. Yeah. They used a roll up hinge for the video cable that goes down in and into the computer, uh -huh. into the laptop, and that opening and closing of the lid yeah. eventually eventually wear break, that out breaks breaks that yeah. right there. And I mean, it's, it's it's a hinging is made for one thing only hinges screen gate, and it's screen. not made. Wow, wasn't that like a movie where they went back to ancient Egypt? No, no, no. Oh, that wait, was wait, time. Star Stargate. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the show. battle between Miss Highlander. The, no, so the, the third thing to take away from CES this year would be the battle between AMD and Intel will intensify. Except for Intel didn't bring any processors to the to, to, to CES. So. so they showed up with at a gunfight without any guns. No, but AMD did. AMD came out with a new uh, laptop processor, the uh, Ryzen 4000 series. Okay. And it's an 8-core with a 4.2 turbo boost on it. Aren't they going to call it an octa-core? <laughs> God, that would be like... That, that, that compares to 
uh, Intel's laptop, which is uh -huh. an i7 processor, yep. which was only uh, only came out with a dual core. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Now, see, back in the day, you know, you you start hearing the word AMD, and you're like, oh, hell no. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, no, that, that's like, what was the other, you know, there was uh, Intel, AMD, and what's that other processor that everybody was like, what the, why? Oh, there was another processor. Well, there was used to be the 486DX, then the Cyrex chips came out. Cyrex, yeah. <laughs> We can go way back, back yeah, in the time. Oh, my. It's like, <laughs> why bother? But I guess, you know, okay, so I guess the Intel thing and the AMD thing is, is turning into PC versus Mac back in the day. Yeah, Hatfields and McCoy. And, and don't forget, you know, Apple's make, creating their own processors and their own GPUs and chips. So we'll see where, where this goes. Yeah, it's kind of funny. We went from a closed system to an open system with Mac, and now we're going back to a closed system. Which, maybe maybe Tesla will go ahead and follow behind and start doing their own chi their own proprietary <laughs> chips on their cars. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. All right. Yeah. So hey, okay. Know. So this year, I guess, was the um, everybody had a concept. concept so concept cars, cars yeah. concept this, concept that, <clears throat> prototypes. The problem with CES though is um, if you go back and look, I've been I, I have gone through some of the stuff that they said is coming out. It's the same stuff coming out in the last four years. Same rollover. Yeah. It's 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 nothing's. Well, that's what you're gonna do. They just I mean, have enough funding. They just have enough funding to keep bringing their <coughs> one product back to the show. Right, but yeah. they update the software in it. Oh, that's right. That's, that's what right. it is. It yeah. says hello now. Yeah. <laughs> And next year it'll say, hello, how my are you? <laughs> Alexa now tells my robot to go ahead and vacuum the floor now. <laughs> what's, your, what's your robot's name? Consuela? <laughs> Bob. Bob. My, my, mine's Bob. Bob. All right, so the next thing is uh, number five is Quibi is ambitious but un, unproven. <clears throat> now, you're a Quibi person. Well, I, I know about so you Quibi. You know about it. Um, Quibi is a, it's short for Quick Bites. And uh, Harvey Katzenberg, who was one of the people from DreamWorks, decided that what we needed to do was um, cater to people with very short attention spans or very short amounts of time. And so when you're standing in line or you're between projects or wherever it is that you could actually be engaging in like human interaction or observing the world around you, no, you should be glued to a phone and watching a four or five minute chapter in what may be a longer movie. And... Uh, Two things, okay, the first thing that tells me that it's, it's a terrible idea is that it was inspired by the Da Vinci Code uh, because oh. all of that is five-page chapters or less. Um, the second thing is, you know, as John has said many times, our attention spans are, are, are absolutely fine if you've got compelling content. Now, catering to somebody who only has four or five minutes, um, maybe they should be doing something else besides completely diverting themselves from life. Yeah. For if they have four or five minutes. I don't know. Talk to the person next to you. Oh, no, 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 oh, no. no. I, yeah. No, no, not doing that. Uh, whatever. I mean, I do it all the time. I ain't talking um, to you. I don't even know you, man. Get away from me. Stop looking over my shoulder. That's okay. My we, porn. We surround you. <laughs> on my phone. Speaking of porn on your phone... That's another topic that's coming up, too. <coughs> yeah, that's but, coming. But this Quibi concept, um, they're actually having to create all new content. They want to make a rival to Netflix that is the opposite of binge-watching. It is going to be burst-watching. Um, and yeah. that's I just made that up. I really like that name. Um, but the uh, th that's... And to me, it's, it's just going in the wrong direction. Uh, it, it's teaching everybody that we shouldn't have longer attention spans or look for deeper subjects or learn more about something than what you can do in four minutes, which is crazy. I, right. It's just it's just telling everybody it's okay to be uh, ADHD, have ADHD. That's all. <laughs> yeah, everybody needs a reason. It's giving it to them. Yeah, it's everybody it needs them. a reason. Yeah, go ahead. I'm failing because you know what? <clears throat> I have ADHD. Yes. It's not that I don't. I'm lazy. Or it's not that I just don't want to you know, do anything for a living. I want it all handed to me. I would rather say I have ADHD, so I have a reason to be a schmuck. Sorry. You don't need a reason. I'm just a schmuck. You're born I'm just that saying. way. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful and yeah. bald and a schmuck. Anyway, so the next one is uh, smaller companies are chafing under big tech. Now, I kind of, I, this is one of those things where. Um, I don't feel sorry for them, but I guess uh, Sonos has actually stole the story of the show with its lawsuit against Google. 
and it came out hours before CES show's floor opened. And it started, but basically, you know, these little small companies are not able to keep up with these monster no. tech giants. Well, okay. If I go out tomorrow and start a new on-demand video services that everybody gets to pay $4.99 to be a part of, and I put video up there, and then turn around and go, oh, oh, well, Netflix is hurting me. That's I don't, dumb. Yeah. It is, yeah. but look, I'm going to give a different kind of example. Okay, I'm going to talk about um, Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you invent a product and you go out and find somebody to make that product for you and you put it up on Amazon and it starts selling like wildfire, mm -hmm. Amazon notices that. Yep. Amazon says, hey, that's a great idea. Let's go find a hole in their patent, if they even have one. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go contract with their manufacturer around them, and I'm going to steal all their production capacity. And thank you very much for test marketing that idea for us that we now own, and we are selling, and we are making the money, and you're bankrupt. But Amazon, That's what but they're Amazon, talking yeah, about. Yeah, but Amazon doesn't do that. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do, John. That's no. exactly what they do. No, they just go, they just go and they come, they come in and buy the company and go, we'll fulfill. No, they don't buy the company. They buy the, they buy the <coughs> manufacturer if they do anything. And then they don't make for that guy well, anymore. Like I said, they only they make buy for the themselves. Company. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a case where the big tech companies and just big companies across the board have gotten so large that they cannot be competed with anymore because they will either buy you out or they will push you out well, well the, i think the thing with sonos for instance is they they started off something that was really good it was cool it was really good idea very Le cool really cool technology they 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 had the for the longest time they pretty much had the market cornered obviously they didn't do something right because they were they did not whatever the technology they used at the time they should have went in and, and either made it more compelling or made locked, it it in, made, locked it in to the point where nobody else could do the same thing. Everybody can do the same thing now. Alexa can do the same thing. You can, you can have your music streaming everywhere. Siri can do it. So, Apple TV can do that. So, yeah, <clears throat> I mean. Everything that you can do. Here's, a, here's, here's the thing. Do something better. You know, if, if you're, if you're going to do it, do it well and come out and just make it always better than the other person. Mm -hmm. That's like McDonald's. McDonald's made burgers, hamburgers forever. Next thing you know, Burger King came on the thing. What or are we going to say that only McDonald's can make hamburgers? No. No. All right. So, so if if Sonos came out with a product, or companies like that came out with a product, and Google said, "Hey, that's a great idea. Maybe we'll make our own version of that." I mean, it's not like Sonos came up with the technology to do it, because they all stole that technology from Apple anyway. Okay. So you know, if, you, if you're talking to if you're talking to a, a, a device like the Sonos, you could in the beginning, that that technology came from being a, from Apple, because they're the one that they're the one that brought the whole talking to Siri and everything else out there. Now, nobody else did that. So if you're going to make well, a product, and I mean, make Apple, a good product. Apple got their GUI from IBM. There you go. Okay, yeah, IBM wasn't using it. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly, you know, their graphic user interface, you know, it's like, hey, we got an idea. For, or, and, and the mouse, right. the whole mouse concept. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, well, what, what are we going to do with this thing? We yeah. have no idea. Suddenly it becomes. Which you have to put this. a tracker on because you can't find yours all the time. I know. <laughs> but I found it. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a, yeah, really. There it is. Mouse, clapper. get over here. Mouse uh, <laughs> but, the, but, the, but the bottom line is, is you, if you, if you don't, don't bitch and don't get old or big. Make your product better than theirs. Yeah. All you're doing is tying up the court system for no reason. That's just dumb. I don't know. That's I'm, just dumb. So, I don't know. I, don't know. I guess it, it, it depends on if, if <coughs> you're using the technology or... I mean, I'm looking at something right here. Okay? <laughs> Let me read this real quick. Yeah. So I started selling on Amazon FBA in July. My first product has been wildly successful. 40000 per month in revenue within the first month. Well, I guess Amazon took notice. They started contributing to my listing and showed themselves in the buy box along with me. But I guess they were still sourcing manufacturers, so their shipping time showed up as one to two months. Thus, I will be winning the buy box. Well, it looks like they found their new manufacturer. Amazon has taken over the buy box for me on my personally created listing for my privately labeled product. They now show as prime shipping, so Amazon has crushed another 
another little guy. I, they literally took over the guy's listing to sell their product mm -hmm. because they had Amazon Prime delivery and he did not. That's and so, I mean, how is that okay? First, first to market. He, he was the first to market. Well, then he needs to be able to step it up and, com and compete against that. How do you compete against someone who actively loses money for years in order to crush all competition? Stop. And that's what Amazon does. That's just what they, they do. They, and why is that okay? Why is it not well, okay? Well, pretty soon, the only thing you can get is what Amazon makes. Well, and they will decide what you thing, have. But they don't make it. Yeah, they do. They got a new manufacturer. They make it. Okay. So, all right. Well, make your product better. Make your product, or, or at least get, get... Without any sales now, you have to make your product better. Good luck with that. Well, that's, that's You've lost your revenue stream. Patent your product and ask for royalties. Let them sell it. And then you have to sue them in the courts. So, that, so there, there you, you have it. There's okay. your royalties. And you need that budget, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, the budget to go up against Amazon. I want you to think about that. Oh, it's billions. Well, you'd, have to, you'd have to make sure you own it first, the product first. All of it. All of it. All of it. Well, yeah. If you, the minute you pull from somebody else's technology sure. to make your technology, you don't own it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you open yourself up Absolutely. for people to come in and go that can do it bigger, faster, better, larger. Yep. yep. Here's, oh, well. here, the, the, I look, I, I look at it this, oh, this way because one. everything that I do is, everything that WeBeam TV does is, um, I'm based off of every, I'm, uh, I use other people's technology to, to do what we do. Exactly. You have right? Yeah. So I, I'll, I know I'll never be bigger than Fox or ESPN or, or Netflix or anybody like that. I just have my own little corner of the world, and I do what I do, and it is what it is. If people watch, they watch. If they don't yep. watch, they don't watch. But there's nothing out there. I, I'm, I'm tired of hearing, it's not fair that they got that big. Why not? They busted their ass. They worked their asses off. They did what they had to do. They did whatever they did to they get it. They stole from other people. Well, they, and they which, stole from other those people. Those other people are using other people's technology, and too. And you know what? The, yep. only, the only way they're going to be able to copy John is to deep fake him into another show. <laughs> <laughs> deep fake. I'm looking at the cost-benefit ratio. <laughs> did you, did you, did you, did you read it. about that, though? Yeah. yeah. The, that TikTok thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, that I didn't see. Oh, yeah. So we told All you right. we'd talk about some sexy stuff. <laughs> so believe it or not, at CES, they had a whole line of um, sexual devices. devices that help you. But they had to run a different rule and regulations on how they, they displayed. displayed and talked about. Mm -hmm. I, I guess if it, yeah, it's electronic. It's new. This is CES. Wireless so. charging. You know, wireless, wireless <laughs> charging. charging. Oh my! <laughs> I don't even want to know about that. I had never considered Bluetooth uh, controllable, <laughs> phone controllable. <laughs> phone control. Never, oh never my. dies. Uh, <laughs> put yeah. the charger under. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so tech companies also fetish number number eight it says tech companies fetish fetish fetishized, yep. which is hard. A I A K and five G a little less. Finally. Yep. So they're over trying to over push the 5G and the 8K and AI, blah, blah, blah. They were just getting down to some kind of cool tech stuff, so. which is kind of cool, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. So that was CES. If you, can go, if you want to go read more about it, go to The Verge and just yep. jump on there. They, all, they have plenty of stuff um, that... You can talk about, but before we get to this next thing, which is we're going to talk about Facebook, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> we're going to talk some other stuff real quick. So, something's dying. Something's dying. It's coming to the end. Oh, no. Tomorrow is the end of Windows 7. What? Tomorrow. Wait. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. What? Yes, the 14th. No. Will be the end of, <coughs> of any kind of security patches and updates to Windows 7. That's ridiculous. Well, now, I mean, they, it's been 10 years in the making. Next, I mean, thing, next thing you're going to tell me XP is going away. Come on. Does that include Windows 8? <laughs> huh? Do they throw window? Do they bundle Windows 8 in with Windows 7? And they're going to kill them both because they might the as well. They yeah, might as well, but you know, yeah, Windows 8 is like the millennium of, uh, of Windows <laughs> operating system. It's kind of like you uh, know, nobody talks about it anymore. You know, you had you had Windows 98 and then 98 SE, then you had Millennium, <coughs> and then you had XP. 
Yeah. But that Millennium, nobody ever talks Wait, about where, Millennium. Where was Vista? Hold on. Uh, <laughs> Vista yeah, came did, after XP. Where did Vista stop? Yeah. Yeah, and see, and there you go. We got Vista too. So Windows 8, what, Vista, what and was, Millennium. What was Vista? Those are the, those are the stop gates. I know not what you speak. So of. yes, uh, you're gonna you're gonna end up um, the operating system that must not be named. Yeah, yeah the, uh, must not name that said yeah. thing. Uh, mm. We had a we had a problem. It didn't it didn't work out. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, so so basically, tomorrow. what's going to happen is um, you know. You, your, your operating system is going to continue to work like normal. It's not going to... You know, or not work like normal. Well, did it ever work normal? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's going to keep working. Um, the way it is. It's working. not going to receive any more security patches, any updates, if, if they so find any... So more and more hackable as Exactly, time goes on. more hackable. Um, yeah. If you have um, either cloud-based software right. or any other kind of software installed on your computer, your automatic updates... <laughs> may be turned on, but the packages may not be updated. Well, there won't be any updates to update it with. Well, there'll be no updates from the manufacturers because they're going to say, turn around and say, well, because you're running an outdated operating system, we're no longer going to patch our software. Right. So there's, there's always that yeah. you know, possibility okay. of something like that happening. Ugh. So you know, it's, it's, this has been talked about enough times now. There's no reason why you have to still be on Windows 7 you know, Windows 10 has m more than been out there in, in the real world. It's for quite it's, a while. It's and working. It's, and it's, it's updated there's no beyond problems. its original problems. So don't, you know, it's time to upgrade. It's time to, you know, move away from some of those older software packages. You know, um, time and time again, it's going it, to, people are going to come out. They're going to find a way to, to get into your data. They're going to find a way to, to destroy your company, destroy your computer, whatever it is. They're yeah. going to find a way, and right. you're just making it easier for them. So don't whine about it. Just do it. Get it over with. Pull the trigger. Know. Take care of it. Yeah, we had a <clears throat> had a um, client come in the other day. Actually, they're a show as well as a client. Um, and he was asking me uh, why his videos won't play on his computer. And I'm like, okay. I said, what do you have for a player? Well, he didn't know, so... And they're up there in age. You know, I don't. I, I'm not. They're not tech people. But you know, I said, well, <clears throat> what operating system? Oh, I have Windows 8. <laughs> so okay. I said, why don't you update to Windows 10? Oh Lord, no! I've heard all the bad things, and blah, blah. I said, mm, no, <sighs> that's kind of all been fixed. And yeah. That said, would have been an improvement. <laughs> yeah, I said... At that point, at, at this point now, yes, it is. So I said, go download VLC, <laughs> because we, we find that VLC plays literally almost anything. I said, if that doesn't fix it, you need to go and take your computer to Adam and let Adam just update it to Windows 10 and get it over with. Yep. I said, it's free. It's a free update. I mean, you did it for us. <clears throat> we had a computer in the back that uh, is because we're now streaming on YouTube. Uh, you can see if, if you have a smart TV or something like that in your office or home and you want to watch and you want to put our channel on, you can put on either, you know, if, if your smart TV doesn't have a web browser, which some don't, which blows my mind. Yeah. But again, they're not smart TVs. It's a bell curve. But uh, if you, well, if you're, but most smart TVs have YouTube. If you go to YouTube, type in WeBeam TV, you can watch our channel all day long just like on the front of our page. We do that now for other clients that mm -hmm. have televisions in their, in their, in their businesses. Um, <clears throat> so I said, just go update it. It's just easier that way. Get her done. Because we had, like, like I was saying, we have a machine back in the back, which was a Windows 7 Pro, and I knew we were getting to the end. Yeah. So I text Adam. I'm like, okay, Windows 7 Pro, how do Pull I do trigger. this the right way? Because I didn't want to, I know he was busy and didn't want to bring in, but you know, just have just for him to do the Windows 10 update. And ultimately, we had to go to another machine because for some reason the installer software. So it's not always super easy. But once we got that little thumb drive, we put that thumb drive in. Oh man, I mean, it, it took about two hours to completely do, but it, it did it all by its lonesome. I didn't have to do anything other than go in and just say yes, 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 I agree, blah blah blah, and we're done. So yeah. if you if, if you need to upgrade, upgrade. It's, it's just easy. Yeah, I went from 7 to 8. 8 was a nightmare. Um, and when 10 came out, I'm like, oh, thank God. I mean, I was a little scared, you know, because it also had bad reviews coming out of the gun. But everything does when it first launches, just like Catalina. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. of course, this was back in my PC days. <laughs> yep. Um, but notice how they skip 9, though. And, what's that? Yeah, you notice how they skip 9, right? It's interesting, isn't it? Well, because 7, 8, 9. 7, 8, 9. Yeah, oh, 7, 8, 9. <laughs> 
can tell we're dads. We all got that. Yeah, Um So, let's talk about branding. Branding for 2020. If I hear one more time, I have perfect 2020 vision for 2020, I'm going to puke. You know what it is? What? It's the two zeros in 2020. You can put them on your eyes. <laughs> yeah. I perfect mean, where vision. were all the 2020 glasses for New Year's, you know? Yeah. yeah those were like, like right there. They're back, back with 2000, 2010. We had those. <laughs> I remember those, the big sparkly ones. Big sparkly but um, ones. <laughs> branding. Branding is a, a nifty thing that a lot of people don't realize how important it is, especially small business people. Um, because they think, well, I just am what I am. Mm-hmm. But what you are is going to be completely different to every person unless you control your message, control your image right. when, when communicating. And if you've got, you know, uh, oh, when I'm on Facebook, I, I act this way and talk this way and I use these colors <laughs> and my business cards don't look anything like that. And then when I... You know, when people come in the store, they're going, wow, this is your store. This doesn't look like what I expected. You, you know, it's like they walk into the studio and, you know, here and they never get to this point, but they only see the chroma key over there. You, you know, they're going to be like, wow, is, is this the same place? I don't recognize it. This right. isn't what I expect. And when you are establishing trust with a customer, because the only reason somebody's going to buy from you is because they trust you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, or your price is so insanely low that they think they're buying a lottery ticket. Yep. Okay. Those are the only two reasons people are going to do business with you. So if you want them to trust you, you cannot overthink your consistency in your image and brand. Um, I know, you know many, many years ago, I was doing um, con- uh, uh, financial consulting, and I had a, uh, a kiosk that I split with five other guys at the mall. And they, I did one thing very differently. I was there every Friday all day. They would split their other days, half days here, half days there, you know, and then they'd, they'd, they'd toss it up to see which one was better. I never made a change. I was there Friday. At the end of one year, I did seven times what the rest of them did combined because everybody knew I was there on Friday. I was consistent. I never missed a day. If they called in the office, oh, I talked to this guy there on Friday, everybody knew who I was. I did seven times what the other five guys did combined by being consistent with my brand and with my image, and that's what I was. And when you're trying to establish trust, that's what you have to do. So when you're picking your brand for your business, you know, I mean, Adam, question for you. What is it that makes you, who is your business? Answer. Me. No. No, I want you to go beyond that. When when people... When people think about your business, what do you want them to think of? I want to think about I computers, think about technology. Me. Computers, technology, but how does, how does that benefit them? How does it benefit them? Yeah. It solves their problems. Ah, there you go. You want to be a, a technology problem solver. Right. Okay? So how do you express that in your brand? And these are the things that you have to work through when you're creating your marketing program. And, and then, I mean, the nice thing is it's so easy to do in the digital environment. Yes. When you're on there and you're doing it on Facebook, you can create your brand and get it out there. And then what happens is because you've created it so holistically, so completely in the digital environment, it then will permeate back to your physical right. you know, brick and mortar. And it becomes who you are and what you are. And everything revolves around that. I mean, you know, we used to have mission statements and all that stuff. Now it's a brand. And so build your brand, stay consistent with your brand, and you will see that the right customers keep coming to you. You're not attracting just anybody. You know, you're not, you're, <laughs> you're not helping people who are walking in off the street saying, hey, my phone battery needs to be replaced. Can you help me? Or can I charge my phone battery here? I was actually in Adam's store when somebody walked in and did that. And it's like, what gave you the idea that a computer Literally. repair place would do that? Literally, you know? he had the phone, the battery out. Yeah, he had the, the battery phone. out of the phone and was asking if, if Adam had the port to charge it. And I'm like, that's great that they got the idea of technology, but, you know, really, it's computers. Wow. And you focus in on that. That's amazing. And when they walk in the store, I could tell the guy's like, I don't think I'm in the right place because guess what? There's no signs for cell phones here. Right. And that's exactly right. I mean, your showroom is beautiful. I love your, your little layout there. It's really, really neat. And, I mean, the, the real downside was I could still see you, you know, when I walked in. 
and that's the downside, being oh. able to see you at any time. Wow, but, uh, that's just me. <laughs> well, we're all so nice here to each other. Right? <coughs> we uh, are. We're very, we're so, we're so, but it's not yeah. Kumba yet. No, I'm just but, you, you know, that is Kumba also a part time. of branding. Can I see the tech working on my computer? I mean, you take something to Best Buy, the Geek Squad disappears with it. You take it to Apple, it goes in the back and it's gone. Because they don't want you to see the little L's back there doing all the work. Exactly. <laughs> um, the sweatshop environment that e they have in the back. Exactly. Okay, but, but with Adam's place, you can see the sweatshop environment. And those are things <laughs> that you can go, you know what? I want to build this into my brand. Okay, I want to make sure that people can see that we have a nice, clean, up-to-date, modern workshop in the back. There's a lot of computer places that don't. I mean, you walk in there, and they've got, you know, it's a row of 1994 hell. monitors for sale still, <coughs> yeah. you know, and it's horrifying. They haven't moved. And they haven't been dusted since 1995. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> how, how is my computer going to come out of this place? Right. So all of that stuff is, is, yeah. is about branding and stick to it. And then what happens is you can save a lot of money on your advertising. Because what you've done is you have created what, what, I, what I've always called silver bullet advertising. Okay? You've got one shot. People know who you are. Period. You're the first one that comes to mind when they think about that subject. Because you have now um, implanted yourself with that single, simple brand. And that's what you want to create when you're doing all this stuff. And stay consistent. Stay the quality of the market that you're dealing with. So if you're dealing really high-end stuff, don't print black and white paper labels for your product yeah. you, you know, on, on sticky paper that you got at Staples. And we actually are dealing with that right now with, with one of our clients. Still on it. Um, the, the manufacturer is insisting on sending them the labels, and they are literally painted, and it looks so just never mind. Uh, you know, so, yeah, whatever. But really, upgrade everything to match who you are and then stay there. Um, so that's today's talk on branding. 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 Now I'm going to have one a day cup of get, One day we're going to have all four shamans in here. Russell will ever decide to come in. Anyway, he's he, he's missed. Uh, all right, so let's talk wow. about. Okay. Let's let's talk about. Um, so I was watching I was watching the news this morning while I'm having my morning cup of coffee, <clears throat> and uh, Box 13, town of Tampa. Report on a story about Facebook. Facebook. Everybody's on. Everybody wants to hammer against the the giant, right? Because they're not going to. They're not going to not allow uh, political advertising. They're matter of fact. They're even. They're even proud of the fact that they're going to let them target and the whole nine yards do it. They're not going to sit there and go through. They're not going to. Um, they're not going to, you know, you know, fact check their their ads, <clears throat> and I just kind of find it funny and ironic that Fox 13 does it, eight does it, CNN does it, MSNB, Fox News, all, they don't, they run all these political ads. I'll guarantee you a million dollars right now that they're not going, they're not fact checking those political ads. Yeah. So, yeah. but yet they all want to sit there and talk about how Facebook shouldn't allow it. Why well, not? Well, for one very good reason. Facebook is taking a huge chunk of their advertising dollars away from them. That's why. So they want to hammer and hamper Facebook's ability to take those dollars by forcing Facebook to do something that they <coughs> themselves Don't will not do. Right. So, I mean, I'm, <coughs> I commend Twitter and all the other ones are going to ban all the ads. But, hey, look, you know what? It is what it is. You know, it, it's it's we're, it, it's it's almost like we're in football season. You know, Super Bowl. It's it's Super Bowls here, and all the ads are going to start showing up. Right, wrong. Look, if you believe everything you see in a political ad, you're a freaking moron. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to flat out tell you that right now. So oh. you got to take everything that you see in those ads with a grain of salt, because oh, a whole salt. They're there. all. On. What was you said that right before we went on? You said. Um, you were talking about the political ads in, yeah, in I mean, the very look, nature. Look, yeah. Uh, uh, the point is you're trying to convince someone to vote for your candidate. So you are, you are creating an intentionally biased message in order to influence someone probably emotionally. Now, if that's what you're doing, okay, then you may have 100% of the facts accurate in there, but you're leaving out 50% of the facts in order to create a biased message. 
And if some of your facts are wrong, and who is to be the arbiter of what is a fact and whether it is right or wrong? There you go. Okay. Uh, because there's too many things that we take as fact that are really only theoretical, but we believe they are fact, okay, because, you know, it's, oh, but everybody knows that. Okay, but that's not, that doesn't make it a fact. So how do you fact check these things in reality? Right. And I think Zuckerberg actually gets that. And he's made those statements, that, <laughs> but, but then people jump on them like, oh, my God, he promotes fake news. No, that isn't what he's saying. He's saying that my perspective on reality may not match yours, and I do not have the moral right to say you can't have your perspective. Right. And that's what Facebook is you, doing. You know, and look, for, once in a, for once, I applaud them. Yeah, let them that go, stance. man. Because here's the deal. You know, it's, it's all about money. It's, you know, they're not, oh, yeah. Facebook's not in, you know, they, they, they got into it. It's kind of funny, though. People forget that Facebook itself came out to be a judge women from other college campuses. That's really what it started. <laughs> That's how it was started. That's literally the reason it came about. And then it went blah, blah, blah. It went Explains bigger. the name. You know, but, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so now, you know, they're, a, they're an advertising agency. They're a medium. So yeah. why not take these morons' money and go? Okay, you want to spew crap? Go ahead, spew crap. I don't care. Well, I'll take that. I'll take it because well, I mean that's, is, a, that's if, a billion dollar industry right now. If they now. get into the business of um, curating the material, okay, and saying this is good and that is not good, this can be on my platform and that can't. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do that. They're wide beyond. Wide open. Then they are stepping into the role of a publisher and deciding what can be published. <clears throat> and what cannot, and that puts them at a liability standpoint, okay, right. on everything that they then allow on their but that's, platform. And, and that's just it. That's, mm -hmm. They're not. They're, they're not, not going to do that. that. And like, they, they at least have the intellectual honesty and, of course, the greed to carry that all the way through and say, we're not going to do that with our advertising either. Have a nice yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to yeah. pay us to advertise to our masses, this is what's going to cost you. Pick your masses. Exactly. And the, the ability, they have a 55,000-point algorithm. That, um, and honestly, okay, I've used it for political campaigns myself. Okay, that's what we've done. And we have used their algorithms in order to target very specific audiences that we know are very interested in certain subjects and want to see certain information. And so that's what we deliver to them in, an incre in the most efficient manner that you just cannot do on cable or broadcast or any of the other, you know, video media out there. Yep. Uh, it's phenomenal. So, hey, yep. welcome. You know, good job, Zuckerberg. Make yep. that money, baby. I <laughs> say um, <clears throat> okay, so um, Amazon, <laughs> speaking of your favorite company, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon suspiciously says browser extensions, <sighs> honey, is a security risk now that PayPal owns it. Yeah. I noticed they got kicked out of Chrome. How about that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, PayPal, <laughs> PayPal's smarter. You know, I remember. I remember when they first came around. It was the only way you could do anything on eBay. Oh yeah. You know, and it yep. was an eBay company, and yep. then and then they split, became yep. PayPal, and then now they and they've bought a ton, a ton of stuff. But you know, they acquired Honey. Uh, back in November 2019, I think it was. Right. And, and Honey is an awesome extension that you can put in. And what it does is it does your shopping for you. When you are looking to buy something, Honey will go out and find discount coupons all over heck and high water. And come back and give you the best deal on whatever it is you're buying. That is direct competition with Amazon. Yep. Because that's what Amazon is supposed to be there for. You go to Amazon to find the best thing. Amazon's supposed to be a giant search engine for finding the best product. I, now, see, and that's I've, really where they're headed. I've never seen... Okay, so I've, I've tried to use Amazon for such things. And, and it doesn't work. It's, it's never worked right. Um, I always find a better deal going out and just going to Google itself and trying to find the best deal. Um, that, and, and a lot of times it didn't come up on Amazon. Yeah, but you aren't exactly normal. No, I'm not. That goes mm -hmm. without saying. And um, but but the, and honey has never worked that good for me. So I've I've. But the point is, they see it as competition, and so now they're trying to defame it and knock it out because, regardless, more people than not 
see their Amazon Prime membership as Google for buying stuff. And so they just go to Amazon. They don't even look anywhere else because Amazon says it's cheapest. Right. Okay. And then they just buy it on Amazon and they never even try to find a lower price. And so they are becoming a huge product search engine. Pro and when you've got something else that's saying, hey, by the way, we can turn your browser into a product search engine, they're panicking. They're yeah. like, no, that's our space. Right. That's our space. And it's funny, too, because you know, <coughs> I'll, find, uh, I'll find some technology that's on Amazon that is 50% more than eBay with mm -hmm. the same free shipping. Same free shipping. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll even get free shipping that's faster on eBay Potentially than, than I get from Amazon on certain yeah. items. So I, get, I get upset when I go to eBay to buy something, okay, and I buy it and it shows up in an Amazon box. <laughs> that infuriates me, <laughs> okay? Funny. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> to, to me, that's like delivering a copy of Mein Kampf to a synagogue. Okay, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's so, bad. So, John, do you use uh, Netgear routers at all? Um, I don't know. What did you give us? <laughs> I don't remember. I think it's a Netgear. <laughs> I think it is a Netgear. Netgear router. What's I have a, a, I have a Netgear router, and it's, yeah. a, uh, it's a Nighthawk brand. Okay. Um, so, Netgear makes good hardware. Um, but their software end is a little bit cumbersome. Um, sometimes you can't um, do like, like say for instance, you wanted to have like a um, assign a, an IP address to a MAC address in your network. So okay. a particular device, anytime it connects, you want it to have the same, the same IP right. uh, address at all times. Uh huh. <laughs> that was uh, uh, that was in front of me uh, yesterday. So, anyways, Sorry, we digress. We're looking at a picture that, that <laughs> one digress. of our tech shamans sent us. <laughs> so, anyways, the um, uh, the the software I noticed that I have, yeah, the least time on the the way they thought that this particular router was is they would give a short lease time on devices and constantly rotate IP addresses all the time. Right. Great in concept. Problem being is. One device will have an IP address and not switch it, so all of a sudden when the router starts re-handing out IP addresses and starts just blatantly going out, things would duplicate. So, for instance, you know, one of our iMacs would then all of a sudden show up after it went to sleep and woke back up that it now has uh, an IP address of something else on the, on the network. Just out of the blue, so now you'd lose connection. Right. right. So stressful. Slow speeds, just not what I'm expecting from a device that, you know, you pay $180 for. Right. So, um, went to uh, an open source community uh, for Netgear routers, and it's called myopenrouter.com, and we installed uh, a software pack um, into, basically it's a Linux operating system right into the router. It's called DDWRT, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we installed it into our router, and I'll tell you what, it stabilized that router like nobody's business. Really? Huh. And I go ahead and have more features than the stock firmware allowed me to have. And right. I have control over everything. And I mean everything. Is this a free download? It's free. Yeah. Great. So it's yeah. a back door for hackers to come in. <laughs> oh, is it open source? Yep. It, is, it is open source. Oh. <laughs> no. it is Sorry, it, Adam. You no. the one who taught me how to think this it, way. It, 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 uh. is, it is open source <laughs> built on Linux. You, you can lock it completely down. It has a lot more firewall features than, than are capable with the, the stock router. Um, I'll tell you, though, my, my network is stabilized big time. Nice. There's a big increase in speed. And uh, now I can go ahead and, and do what I wanted to do with my router versus what they said I was allowed to do. <laughs> the problem Ooh. is, is when you do these features you don't know about, you know, yeah. when you buy right. certain devices. You, you don't know what they're going to allow you to do and what they're not going to allow you to do. Yeah. So and it's very frustrating sometimes, you know, that, you know, they put all these extra, you know, these features in there. Yeah. And something as simple as, you know, changing the lease time on, on devices or assigning I addresses to certain Macs is not a feature of the software. And just to sit there and have to wait for them to, to come up with a patch, you know, it's been, it's been a good year and a half now. Let's get it done. And nothing's done. So we have to take matters into our own hands. Oh, that sounds dangerous. That's right. Mm. I think it's awesome. Well, congratulations on that fix. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. So something for me to consider moving into, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to go quick, we're going to Spotify. will use everything it knows about you to target podcast ads. Now, 
What's the one thing that we listen to podcasts for? The podcast? No ads. Well, and you know, yeah. this kind of bugs me because when you go on Spotify, I mean, Spotify pays, you know, 0 0.06 cents or whatever it is, 0.6 cents per play of a song. That is four minutes. But if you put on a 40-minute podcast, you get nothing. They don't pay you. But, but now they want to sell ads during your podcast? Are they still not going to pay me? Because mm. that would be a little... Um, <clears throat> you're monetizing my content. Yeah. Okay. But is it in your terms of agreement when you go in with them? I'm sure it is. They can do that. Well, but this just <coughs> this is a change from when many people started. Okay. okay. And so this, this is the problem when you're you're dealing with technology and other people's uh, products or their services. I mean, this yeah. that's why I will not um, like you know a lot of cloud-based software for running your business. Right. right. That's why I sourced out and found you know something that I can house and keep to myself because at any given time they can change their pricing, they can change their business model, yeah. they can go out of business, you yeah. lose everything. Right. Or they can take over your data. Yeah. Um, you don't don't put all your eggs in one basket type of situation, and that's that's tough yeah. because yeah. you know when you got iTunes, you got Spotify. Uh, you, you, you know, if you're trying to disseminate, you, basically it's 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 again Amazon. They're distribution channels yes. for your product. If you have an audio product, then this is your distribution channel, and so it becomes a question of um, you, you know are these distributors getting people in and bait and switching on them, mm -hmm. okay, in so many ways. I mean, Facebook started this way. They, they they came off and they basically showed everybody everything that ever showed up in your timeline. It was kind of randomized. And then suddenly business found themselves being throttled back and back and back. And yeah. pretty soon it was like, oh, only 40% of my audience is seeing my... my, my uh, you know, posts on my on my business page, well, and they, now it's down to like three or four percent. Well, everybody was told, everybody was warned, no one and no one stepped up, and no one sent their congressman letters and whole night. When the FCC opened up the internet, yep, right. If you're going to regulate the internet. That's what's going to happen, and everybody was told that. Yeah, going into and, it, and and I don't have a problem with the it, it's the bait and switch thing that yeah. gets me. So everybody jumps over and puts their podcasts over on Spotify, and then Spotify introduces ads and pays you nothing. Okay, <coughs> well, we, I think we what agreed. Spotify is doing, yeah. but what, what Spotify is, is starting to use, it's, um, it's calling it stream ad insertion. Spotify says it'll begin inserting ads into its shows in real time. So in other words, it's, if, if, you're, if you're a private, like, like if WeBeam TV ever decided to go to Spotify, which I'm not going to, um, I don't think. We'll um, but they can't insert into mine. They can insert the stuff that they... Well, have. no, but they can sandwich yours is what they can do. Yeah. Okay? Um, and even sandwiching around it. Now, of course, I have had Spotify Premium since the day it became available. I, I met some of the like developer reps in Tampa at a tech meeting, God knows how many years ago, 2011. Right. You know, um, and, you know, and so the, they gave me this like discount coupon, you know, with, which was signed by Mr. Spotify. And uh, so I was able to get in, you know, like our first 90 days or something, and then it went on, and I've never turned it off. Right. So I've never actually heard a commercial on Spotify. And, and, um, and, and well, you're going to start. Even with the, it's according to them, even even their their highest even level, even their premium level, premium they're going to start getting, and they're going to use, they're going to use your you're going to use your your data against you. So you know oh, you, may, you, you and I may be listening to the exact same podcast, right? But because I look for different certain things, and you look for different certain, we'll have different ads being right. inserted. Which I don't know. That's why that's why we beam we beam podcast.com yeah. is coming about because yep. we're giving a place for people to park their podcast with no ads. Period. Yep, or dupper. I'm, I'm just over, I'll just do my own thing. And again, <clears throat> by coming to us, you, you get the ability to go in and you're, you're not going to get lost in the, in the fray. No. Because now people can go to right to where it is, they go to your page and that's what they listen to. So. And it gives you, I mean, we're, we're you know, we could, by coming with us, we, we help you put yourself on um, 
what are we were doing iTunes, iTunes and I mean, Google I've, Play and, and blah blah blah. I, I personally so put you out don't there, have a problem with doing Spotify, but now things are changing. Yeah. Right. So it all depends on where we're at. So yeah. anyway, so one last thing we'll talk about is TikTok. TikTok vulnerability could have let hackers access users' videos. So in other words, just exactly why we told you not to use TikTok is exactly what's happening. Is the hackers got in and get they get around your Gmail and Yahoo two-factor authentication. So that two-factor authentication ain't, is not the end-all, be-all. Because obviously now that, you know, and, and we were, you know, people were told a long time ago that China owns TikTok. And I think it's China One. <clears throat> and um, now they're going in through the back door of that and getting into your um, good old data. Wonderful. Yeah. That's why, it's like, that's why TikTok's not on my phone. Because yeah. it's, it was told a long time ago. So, hey. Show's running down. We got about 15, 20, oh, I got about 30 minutes left. Or 30 seconds left. <laughs> tech Shamans. If you have a question for us, tech shamans at webeamtv.com. If you actually want to be on the show, go to tech shamans at webeamtv.com. Neat concept. Yeah, Questions? We'll, yeah, yeah. We, love, we love to have, and, and if you have a question, videotape it. Videotape the question, send it in to us, and we'll play it on air if it's good. And then we'll try to answer that video question. Um, trying to do that uh, once. Yeah, that'd be cool. One video question a week. Oh, that'd be to awesome. See if you can We'd either stump that. us or try to get more information out there and see if yeah. we can elaborate on it. With well, that being said, everybody have a great, say, tech week. Um, <laughs> remember, seven's dead. See everybody later. Seven's dead. Take care. Bye. Bye.